Hey there guys, today I'm going to do a little review on my Hobie Oasis. This is a tandem pedal driven kayak. Now unlike a lot of reviews that are out there on uh, YouTube reviewing kayaks, oftentimes they're just, uh, it's right after they buy it or they've only fished it for a day or two. This review is a little bit different in that I bought this kayak in May of 2015, so that's a little over four years ago. That's uh, July 2019 now. So I've had a lot of time on the water with this kayak, and I have a lot of thoughts about it. Um, some things I like, most things I like, some I don't. Uh, but hopefully this review will help guide you in your decision on whether or not to purchase this kayak, if this is the right kayak for you. So let's just go over some of the features why, or some of the reasons why I bought the Oasis. So some of the things I was looking for in a tandem kayak is that I wanted it to be pedal driven, so that was very important to me. Um, I also wanted uh, both people to be able to uh, pedal, so that's true for the Oasis. It has Mirage drives uh, that go that come with it at both locations, um, in the front seat and back. Um, I also wanted both passengers uh, or kayakers to be able to control the rudder. This was pretty important for me because we fight really big game fish here like Chinook Salmon in the Columbia River and I need that other person to be able to steer while the other person fights the fish. Um, so that was pretty critical. Another thing is it needed to be car toppable. So I need to be able to put this easily up on a roof rack um, because for me if I have to trailer a kayak it really negates one of the major reasons why I like kayak fishing, um, I don't want to have to be forced to use boat launches or anything like that. Um, I also needed to be able to lift it by myself. So my my wife, who's my primary fishing partner in the tandem, um, she's not very big. She's a little petite, so she can't really lift heavy objects. Uh, so I needed to be able to lift it by myself. Also, I wanted to be able to fish out of it by myself uh, because there are times when we go on road trips that. Perhaps she doesn't want to go out fishing for the day, but I do, and I need to be able to handle that kayak by myself in it. So those were some of the major things I was looking for. Um, and if I go back and look at um, you know that purchase I made in the past, I look at today, if I was going to buy a tandem pedal-driven kayak today, I would still buy the Oasis. Um, and I'll talk more about that at the end and some of the other brands and models available out there. So let's just go through some of the features of this kayak real quick. Um, I'll talk about what I like about it and I'll talk about what I don't like about it and um, at the end again I'll kind of make that comparison with the other models. Okay so let's start at the front of the kayak. I'm going to go over some of the features of it and as I'm going through I'm going to talk about what I like about this kayak and what I don't like about it. Uh, so starting at the front, uh, my first nitpick is um, I'm not a big fan of Hobie's handles. These cords, they do rot, and they're excellent at catching hooks. I wish they'd come up with something better, um, but that's what we're stuck with. Um, so periodically you have to replace that rope. Uh, coming from the front back, we have a small hatch that um, we don't typically use for much. It's a good access port if you're going to install any electronics for the front of the boat. Um, that's a good place to put rain jack and stuff like that for the or lunches for a day trip. Uh, here's the Mirage drive. You can see uh, on the model I bought this was before the 180 drives came out. It's just the standard fins on that one. I upgraded the turbo fins for the rear. Um, although since I bought a Hobie Revolution with the 180 drive, I almost always use the 180 drive in the rear position um, because of some of the steering issues with this boat. It's a large, uh, cumbersome boat on the water and doesn't turn very tightly, so having the 180 drive helps a lot. Um, the new ones uh, come with the 180 drive, so it's probably a non-issue now. Um, the cockpits are laid out really similar uh, for the front seat and back. The only difference is, is that the front seat is quite a bit narrower, so this is definitely more comfortable for a smaller person, although my dad sits up here who's slightly larger than I am um, and has no issues. It is just a little bit smaller, so you can see that size difference here, quite a bit wider back here than up here. Both positions will have an access hatch 
for storage, uh, which is really nice. Uh, for repair reasons on rudder lines, and also for installing electronics and things like that, uh, but also for tackle storage. Rudder positions, our rudder controls are for left, right, are on the left side of the kayak, up and down um, for both positions is the same. Now, uh, when this came out, when the Oasis came out, um, I bought it, it didn't have gear tracks. In fact, uh, none of the Hobie kayaks at the time had gear tracks. Now they're starting to become integrated into almost all their new models. Um, so I ended up installing aftermarket gear tracks in all positions. This allows me to move rod holders and fish finders between my various kayaks without having to do um, any significant amount of drilling. It's pretty easy to do. Um, so I do wish that they, if they do come out with a new model, hopefully they'll come out with integrated gear tracks. They both have cup holders and these fabric um, tackle trays. Uh, it's okay, but the hooks do catch on that fabric, so hopefully they go to rubber. Um, it's nice to have a couple different cup holders, though. And then they both have Vantage seats, uh, which are pretty comfortable. We've integrated a little bit of squoosh padding in here for my wife um, since she has sciatic nerve issues and then there's drainage underneath the seat which I'll show you uh, back here okay so continuing back uh, there's paddle storage on both sides of the kayak here but I only carry one paddle at a time because what are the probability or what are the odds that uh, two Mirage drives are going to fail pretty low um, so we just have that one backup paddle with us there is a sailing mass location I've never used and it has the old style of securing the seat with clips rather than the, the, the snaps like the new ones do. Um, so again, uh, it, one of the problems with this kayak is that out of all their fishing kayaks, um, it is not Lowrance ready. It does not have uh, a scupper hole. Uh, designed to take a transducer so you have to either do it over the side or do a through hole uh, transducer which is what I do here I have the through hole wiring kit from Hobie that will wire up to here and then back here I have um, a spot for my transducer to lock in there using the cup method um, which I hopefully will do a video on in the near future so that's one of the things that frustrates me a little bit about this kayak is the lack of the transducer uh, ready um, readiness compared to some of the other fishing kayaks out there, especially the tandems. Again, same two um, storage areas, rudder controls, cups. Uh, these are the reinforced scupper holes for the cart, which will fit. You can store back behind here and then um, you can put it here in the center of the kayak which is nice and makes it really easy to roll it um, because you're fairly center when you have the hobie cart locked into these scuppers now i have had one issue with this kayak that just cropped up this year so let me pop this seat out and forward um, i did develop a crack back here where the seat rests it's not like it's a lethal crack. I can weld this, but um, it is a concern. I do store my kayaks outside. I wish I had the space indoors, but I simply don't. Um, I try to store them on the shady side of my house. Um, but obviously that plastic has fatigued a little bit. Um, not lethal, I can fix it, but it does make me think that in the near future, I'm probably gonna have to replace this boat. Going to the back, um, it has two rod holders here and here. I really wish they would have integrated two more right here and here for this passenger, for the front passenger. It doesn't make any sense to me why they didn't do that. Um, the new Compass does in fact have four rod holders, which is a big deal for me. And I would actually buy the Compass, except for the fact that it does not have rudder control in the front of the kayak and that's a that's a big deal uh, for me I really must have that feature 
All right, so heading to the back here, we got one more um, hatch to access the back and a drain plug. Um, there's not a lot of storage back here. I really wish they would have found a way to extend this out um, a little bit more. This is a 14 and a half foot kayak. There's plenty of space up front um, for the passengers, but man, it's really tight to squeeze to get tackle and a catch bag back here alone. I mean, um, when I'm catching king salmon, we have our catch bag sticks way off the end of the kayak and kind of balances it, um, but it can easily get knocked off. So it's something that I do wish uh, this kayak had was a little more space. If you're just catching smaller fish and stuff like that, there's ample space back here. Same carrying handle. It has an oversized rudder, sailing rudder. It comes standard with it. Um, this thing uh, does not turn well. It's, it, I get really frustrated with this boat in windy situations because it sits so high off the water. Uh, you stay really dry in it, I'll give it that much. But man, it uh, it is hard to turn this kayak. Um, until we had, until I got the 180 drive to put in the back, I found it extremely challenging to fish structure with this kayak, like bass fishing and working around structures. It was very challenging. It was fine for trolling um, and open water jigging, um, but boy, bass fishing was a pain with it. The 180 drive made a big difference, and because the new ones have it. I think it's less of a, a deal breaker. So let's talk about some of the other kayaks out there on the market. Um, so there's currently three manufacturers of pedal kayaks, tandem pedal kayaks on the market. One is this, um, I think, what's it called? Like a Brooklyn Kayak Company. They're on Amazon. It looks like some cheap Chinese stuff. I'm just not interested in spending my money on something that's going to fall apart. The other is um, the Feel Free Lure 2. This is a tandem roto-molded pedal driven kayak so it has um, some potential but one of the things that drives me nuts about that kayak is one, it um, doesn't have the rudder controls in the front, two, um, it only comes standard with one pedal drive. Um, so it isn't that expensive but when you buy the second drive um, there's not a lot of space up front so um, not really the kayak for me. Uh, Hobie is the manufacturer of several um, pedal tandem kayaks and that includes the Compass uh, which I've talked about. The Compass has a lot of promising features. Um, it does have four rod holders, it does have uh, two pedal drive systems, it doesn't come standard with 180 drives. Um, but it doesn't have that rudder control in the front, um, so it's really not for me. And it's a little bit shorter, so it has a little bit less storage space. Uh, they have two really big tandems. They have the 17T Pro Angler, which is way too big. You have to have a trailer. I can't put it on top of my car, so it rules that out. And that same goes for the Adventure Island tandem as well. Just too large um, to meet my requirements. And then they have an inflatable, which I'm, I'm not even going to consider. So we're back to the Oasis, which um, which is what I would still buy today if I had to make that choice again today. That being said, I'd love to see some features added to it. One, I'd love to see gear tracks become standardized and integrated into the, into the rails rather than having to have these ones projected out. I would like to see four rod holders at minimum um, integrated into the kayak. Uh, 180 drives are a must because of uh, the steering issues with the kayak and I would like to see them adopt a more aircraft carrier rear on the Oasis to give it a little bit more storage space on the back. They did the they did that with the Hobie Outback on the new release and hopefully do they'll do the same um, with the new Oasis whenever it does come out. Um, that being said I still love this boat. My wife and I have had uh, a lot of adventures in it and I've taken out a lot of friends. It's a great way to share that experience without having to throw somebody into uh, their own kayak and make them have to learn as they go. It's really convenient to have uh, just one person um, controlling it and the other person fighting the fish. So if you have any questions about this kayak just uh, shoot them below. I'm going to include links to Hobie's page and to one of my favorite regional kayak shops below if you want to look at picking up one of these boats. 
I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.